Hi, I'm Laura Mize, Pediatric Speech Language Pathologist, and welcome to TeachMeToTalk.com's Therapy Tip of the Week. Last week, we started talking about how to introduce pretend play to toddlers with developmental delays when this is not emerging as naturally as we would hope. I talked to you about using baby dolls and the very beginning, the very first kinds of things that you would want to do with a child. Today, we're going to continue with that topic, and I'm going to show you the other things that I include when we're first starting to build these kinds of skills uh, with a toddler. Remember that even though I'm using dolls, you can also use other things like Thomas the Train or even uh, a stuffed character or maybe a mechanical dog, my little puppy here. So we'll talk about those in a minute. But all of these ideas, uh, what you're going to want to do is pick what a toddler loves, what he already pays attention to, and use that as your foundation for beginning for 10 play. Remember last week we also talked about how these kinds of things have to incur, occur in a concrete way before they're ever going to become symbolic. You know, for some of our children, we, we skip that phase. We want them over playing with the big pretend kitchen and pretending to cook an elaborate meal for pretend friends before they've ever done this kind of play with the baby doll or with another character. And that's that's just out of sequence. It's out of order for how we really need to teach these skills with toddlers. So if you haven't watched last week, back up, watch last week's segment, and then move forward to this week. We talked about last week beginning with pretending to stir, pretending to feed the doll, and then pretending to give the doll a drink. Now while you're doing all that, make sure that you are fun and simple <laughs> so that you can really hook a child's attention. Also, don't forget your exclamatory words and your vocalizations that you're using. One, to keep the child's attention focused on you, and two, so that you can begin to give him a really simple target to imitate for uh, expressive language. If you haven't seen my book, Bu Building Verbal Imitation in Toddlers, this is a great approach for teaching you how to think about all the prerequisite skills that come before real words like eat, and cup and spoon and all of those little baby steps that so many of our toddlers with expressive delays need before they're really ready to imitate single words. The other thing that I really want to encourage you to do while you're working on this kind of pretend play is to help children link meaning or work on their receptive language and their cognitive associations, meaning that they understand what a spoon is for and what a cup is for. So don't forget all of those skills that you should be targeting even if you're working with a late toddler. Even if your long-term goal is words, I wanna hear words, please don't miss those very important steps that have to come first. All right, so when you're beginning to work on pretend play, uh, eating and drinking, great set of objects for you to have in your bag. Another really fun activity for toddlers is washing off a baby doll with the baby wipe. This can be as simple or as advanced as you want it to be. I usually start though when I'm working with children at this level who have attention issues and participation issues and again those receptive and cognitive delays. I don't start with something real elaborate. I just have them imitate washing the baby's face or feet or hands with a wipe. And remember that you're not going to do all this mindless narration, all of the wash the baby's face so baby can be clean, give the baby a bath, oh the baby is so clean. You don't need to talk like that with toddlers with developmental delays. You want to say something like, wash, wash, rub, rub, rub. And again, give the child a, a reason to pay attention to you and to include you in his or her play. Another thing that you can do with a baby wipe that I do with toddlers at this level is to play peekaboo with the doll. And so you'll hide the baby and then do your, where's baby? Where's baby? Boo! Uh, and that's a really fun way to bring an object into that kind of play. Now, if the kid you're working with does not readily play peekaboo with you, there's a problem. You need to back up even further and teach him how to socially engage with you 
Uh, my book, Teach Me to Play With You, has step-by-step -step instructions on how to work on social engagement with toddlers who aren't even really yet ready for this kind of play. All right, so peekaboo is another activity that you can do with a baby wipe. Another early activity or early object that I have in my beginning pretend play set is a hat for a baby. Kids love to try to get this on the doll. They also love for you to put it on your own head. Here is where you might get some really early imitations of uh, vocalizations or exclamatory words. You could even pretend to sneeze the hat off your head, which is a gag toddlers love. You model, ah, 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 choo! And toddlers think that is hysterical, especially if you can get the hat to fall on them. So that's another fun thing you can do. You can also do peekaboo with the hat. So hat is an easy early word. And again, you're looking for object imitation here for him copying the actions that you're doing and um, receptive language. You know, you may have a couple of things set out and you say, where's the hat? Get hat, put hat on the baby. Ooh, hat on. And have the child follow your really simple one step direction. Another early object that I have in this set, uh, you can call these socks or you can call these shoes. <laughs> you know, I purchase all of my baby toys like this at the cheapest place I can find, usually Walmart, or you could even get it at maybe Goodwill or a consignment sale. But just look for baby dolls um, sets that have accessories so that they give you some different options for building vocabulary and again you're going to be able to teach uh, signs with this you know your sign for shoes or your sign for socks children usually have a really hard time getting clothing items on a doll so i don't ever have them do that i most often have them uh, take it off and again off is an early preposition that you're going to want to be teaching as well so socks would be another early um, clothing item that I would use. Another thing that's really, really fun for toddlers is a hairbrush. And again, they can uh, listen to you and watch you as you're modeling brush, 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 brush. Um, you could also do uh, some other Silly things with the brush if you wanted to, you know, should I brush my hand? You know, is this for my teeth? No, no, hair, brush baby's hair. Another thing that toddlers like to do with this is brush my hair or brush mom's hair if she's there with you during the session. So that's another really early object that I would include in your first set. One more thing that I nearly always try to have is a set of glasses. Now, if you don't have silly glasses like I found with some kind of set <laughs> you probably have potato head glasses and look how perfect they are on a baby doll so you can use um, those kinds of potato head glasses child sunglasses are also a lot of fun and again you would include these because it gives you so many opportunities not only to teach language receptively meaning you know, what's the name for these things that you're putting on your face, classes, but you're also uh, giving a child an opportunity to imitate actions. And imitating actions always, always precedes imitating words. So it's so, so important that we look for that and that we give children opportunities to imitate what we're doing in play. But glasses are a really, really fun way to do that. Most toddlers love them, and they're easily available here this time of year at the beginning of summer. All of the ideas that we talked about today, you can do with your mechanical dog. And again, some people get so caught up in the bells and whistles of toys like this, but don't miss the basic functionality. You can brush this puppy's hair. <laughs> You can put glasses on this puppy and that might be just enough to keep a toddler with you who might otherwise um, want to disengage and do his own thing. So when you're setting up your basic set, keep it really simple. Find things that a toddler already uses in his or her daily routines. And lastly and most importantly, keep it fun. Keep it fun. That's my last word of parting advice uh, for this week. Thanks so much for joining me for TeachMeToTalk.com's Therapy Tip of the Week. Bye.